Hi, it's Tina. This is a slimline card that I made this week that had plenty of room for a cloudy sky. I've been working on getting more realistic results with the cloud edger stencil, so I recorded my process to share with you. If you're not familiar with the cloud edger stencil, it is a recent release from a colorful life designs. This is a two part set where you get the outer edge stencil and also the cutout mask. And both pieces are useful for different techniques. I will have a link below the video to a video of basic techniques and to the stencil as well as a discount code that you can use for 10% off your order. I've got my image stamped and masked off at the bottom and I like working in layers so I'm going to be doing a lot of layering here. I'm starting first at the top with distressed oxide ink in broken china and a blender brush from tailored expressions and I'm going to brush sort of lightly across the panel with one side of the mask and then move down, rotate the mask, and do the same thing all the way across. Move down, rotate the mask, and make another row of clouds, and then one more row at the bottom. So that is my first layer done. The next thing that you're going to need is a torn edge of paper. And this one has a slight curve to it, but that doesn't really matter. Just tear a piece of scrap paper or cardstock that you have nearby. And I'm going to use that torn edge to create bottoms on some of the clouds. I'm lining up the mask where I had it before. And having that edge masked will make the torn edges look like the bottoms of the top clouds are behind this layer of clouds. And that will help give depth to the sky in our scene here. I don't have a lot of ink on my brush, just enough to make a little contrast here and there. And I will add to those edges later. So I'll repeat that step on down the panel again. And I'm basically just trapping sky space between the cloud mask and the torn mask to create negative space, which gives more form to my clouds. For the next layer, I'm going to use this light gray ink to add a little texture to my clouds. And I'm doing a test run on the back of my panel first to make sure that this gray will be fine and it's not too dark. This is a hybrid ink from Impression Obsession and it is called Mist. My technique here, and I'll slow it down to show you, basically I'm using a circular motion to go over each cloud area and I'm moving the stencil so that the same little curve of the cloud is under the brush each time I go around in my circular stroke. It's a quick step and this ink is very light, but it's just enough to add a little fluff to the clouds. Hopefully you can see that there. I'm going back in now to add a few little billows to my clouds. And to do this, I'm using the same broken china ink and lining up the cloud mask with a bump in the top of the cloud to sort of continue that line down at an angle. And then I'm just doing small spots here and there very lightly. It doesn't take much to build up these forms, just small light edges here and there. For the next layer, I'm going to use the outer stencil. And I've got Tattered Rose Distress Ink and another style of blender brush that has a more subtle touch. The one that I have here is from Clarity Stamps, but you can get a very similar style from scrapbook.com. And I'll add that link below for you on those. This stencil edge corresponds perfectly with the cutout mask, so I can use this to add a little color to the clouds without getting it in my blue sky. So I will work my way down the card and add just a little rosy touch to the tops of my clouds.
Next, I've got a colored pencil that pretty closely matches the blue of my sky. And I'm going to use that pencil lightly right under each cloud to increase the contrast right at that edge. I'm also going to add some horizontal streaks in the sky and also on the clouds coming out from those little places where the clouds or the little billows seem to overlap or like one cloud is in front of another one. The next pencil I have is gray, and I'm going to do the same with the gray pencil. I'm coloring very lightly and adding light and quick horizontal strokes in the blue areas of the sky. I'm adding some long, narrow shadows along the bottoms of the clouds, adding shadows around the little bumps where one cloud is in front of another one, and adding little horizontal streaks on the clouds as well. And then one last step, this marker is a pit marker and these are permanent waterproof markers. They're filled with India ink and the white is pretty awesome for adding highlights. This has a bullet tip and they also come with fine and brush tips as well. And I'll link those below. I'm going to use this marker at the top edges of my clouds and on the top of each little billow to whiten those top little fluffs. And again, I'll add more horizontal streaks across the clouds and into the blue sky spaces. So those were the steps I followed to make these realistic clouds. It is a bit of a process, but each layer adds a little bit more realism to the scene, a little more form and depth, and I think it was all worth it. Again, I'll link all the products I use below the video, and if you're in need of a stencil set, please feel free to use my link and code for a 10% discount. Thank you so much for watching.